Good morning. Welcome to our liturgy for the second Sunday of Advent. Mass are not required in the church at this time. However, Eucharistic ministers will be massed as the Eucharist is distributed. Please stand as we begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, on this second Sunday of Advent, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, and what I have done, what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, let this Mary ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Christ eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Baruch. Jerusalem, take off your robe of mourning and misery. Put on the splendor of glory from God forever. Wrapped in the cloak of justice from God, bear on your head the mitre that displays the glory of the eternal name. For God will show all the earth your splendor You will be named by God forever, the peace of justice, the glory of God's worship. Up, Jerusalem, stand upon the heights, look to the east and see your children, gathered from the east and the west, as the word of the Holy One, rejoicing that they are remembered by God. Led away on foot by their enemies, they left you, but God will bring them back to you, borne aloft in the glory as on royal thrones. For God has commanded that every lofty mountain be made low, that the age-old depths and gorges be filled to level ground, that Israel may advance secure in the glory of God. The forest and every fragrant kind of tree 
have overshadowed Israel at God's command. For God is leading Israel in joy by the height of his glory with his mercy and justice for company. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. The Lord has done great <clears throat> things for us. We are filled with joy. When the Lord brought back the captives of Zion, we were like men dreaming. Taken our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with rejoicing. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad indeed. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the torrents in the southern desert. Those who sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Although they go forth weeping, carrying the seed to be sown, they shall come back rejoicing, carrying their sheaves. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians, brothers and sisters, I pray always with joy in my every prayer for all of you because of your partnership for the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work in you will continue to complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may increase ever more and more in knowledge and every kind of perception to, dis to discern what is of value so that you may be pure and blameless at the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. All flesh shall see the salvation of God. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip tetrarch of the region of Ituria and Trachonotis, and Lysanias was tetrarch of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Anas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah in the desert. John went throughout the whole region of the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one crying out in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The winding roads shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see 
the salvation of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight his paths. I won a weight loss competition in seminary. The rector and the priests and the staff of the seminary had an ingenious idea that to help us with the human formation aspect, our health, that they would make it a competition. It lasted just shy of three months, one semester. And ordinarily, I would really have nothing to do with it because my hobbies include reading and playing video games and the like. I have no interest really in that, except for two aspects. One, it's a seminary full of 70 plus seminarians. So fraternal ribbing quickly becomes a thing. And how can you say no when 60 other of your brothers are egging you on saying they're better than you? And two, there was a cash prize involved. $100. Do you know how many comic books $100 buys, especially on a seminarian's budget? So, of course, I competed, and I went out of my way to win this thing. When I get competitive, I get competitive, and I cut out all soda, all fast foods, all sugars, which was also a wonderful treat because the sisters then went out of the way to make more and more and more chocolate chip cookies to wean out the weak. You could smell it through the whole seminary. Delicious. I cut out all the unhealthy foods, but I also did more. I exercised daily, played basketball with the guys daily, would wake up extra in the morning before morning prayers began to play basketball in the gymnasium myself. I wasn't the only seminarian to have that idea, and one of them passed out during Mass because he failed to eat and the like before Mass, dehydrated. The rector was less pleased now with his idea of a weight loss competition. And come the end of that two and a half months, I won. I stood victorious. And here's the five foot ten dork that loves to read comic books, beating all the others who know far more about sports than I ever will. And in triumph and in jubilation and all the like, after receiving my $100, I immediately got on the phone and ordered a cheese pizza from Pizza Hut and cheese sticks and Pepsi, and I downed that whole thing in one go. And very quickly, all the weight I had lost came back because I went right back to how I used to be before that competition even started. I got what I wanted, I bought my comic books, and now I'm going back to enjoying my Pepsi. We have a temptation, I have a temptation to treat Christmas and our Lord like that weight loss competition. Get to the goal, enjoy the finish, then return to normal. The whole intentionality of Advent is the time of preparation is for a lasting change. That is, we do penance to let go of sin. As we amend our life to prepare for the coming of our Lord, we are not looking at this to be something that is fleeting and then lost, but something that is permanent, foundational, that can be built upon for all the years to come. Like husbands and wives expecting children, the change is meant to be lasting and joyous, never going back to the normal before their inclusion. That's the beauty of Advent. That's the invitation of Advent. And our adversary is sly and a jerk, and he will present to us grand temptations that we very easily say no to, so that he will deceive us from not recognizing we're saying yes to the smaller one. The yes of, I'll do this for four weeks, and then back to normal I go. I'll amend my life for four weeks, and then back to my habits of sin I go. The love is meant to grow, the grace to grow. We're welcoming our Lord into our life. 
And the coming we are getting ready for is not just the coming of his birth 2,000 years prior. It is the coming we look forward to in his second coming. And the coming of the now, of him living in our lives now, where all we do is centered around him. So our invitation is to be better than Father Klein, not hard to do, is to see Advent and Christmas for what it's meant to be, the pathway to receiving him in permanence, in a new glorious normal, in a way that lasts and by his grace is meant to last for eternity. So he is asking us, week two of Advent, in the time of season of penance and repentance and preparation, hence the purple that brings out my eyes. Are we in this Advent season and preparing for Christmas with the mindset of, when it's over, back to the old ways I go? Or are we in it with the intention of, I want the change to last. I want my no's to sin and yes to grace to be permanent and to be built upon each year to come. God is preparing us for eternity. And as such, what he asks us to do here is meant to last in preparation for that eternity. Let us accept his invitation joyously and prepare in such a way that his coming into our lives is eternal. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight his paths. I believe the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten made, substantial with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. And on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in the love and mercy of our Lord, let us unite our hearts and minds and bring forth to God these petitions. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> For the church united as members of the body of Christ, that the keeping of Advent may open our hearts to God's love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of our nation, that they seek always to follow the way that has been laid out to follow Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In union with Bishop Johnson, we pray for families who have experienced fractured relationships, that they receive the grace of healing and reconciliation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all whose life is overcome by busyness, stress, and overcommitment, 
that this Advent brings them peace and opportunity to return their focus to Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who suffer from the chains of addiction or abuse, that the way be open to them for the restoration of life in fullness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died and for those who have died from our parish this week, including Mike Mulligan, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. And today we pray especially for Joan Hughes, for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for the profound gift of your mercy and love. Please help us by your grace and the intercession of your saints to return the gift of love to our neighbor and to you in all that we are and all that we do. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings, and since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way, the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, and so that the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciple saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not I am worthy that, that you should, should enter be. under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the Lord bless you. The body of Christ. May the Lord bless you. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. 
Jesus. The body of Christ. 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 
Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Welcome to any parishioners who are back with us after an extended absence. We're glad to have you with us this weekend. Thank you to the respondents to our annual stewardship appeal for the parish and diocese. 25% of our parish has responded thus far. Parishioners are invited to prayerfully discern their offerings of both the gift of financial support and the gift of presence and return their commitment over the next few weeks. Thank you to the participants of Saturday morning's Advent Morning of Reflection. This weekend is the first Sunday food drive benefiting Seton Center and our local Redbridge food pantry. Items may be brought into the narthex through Monday morning. This Sunday evening, tonight, The Sarans hold their annual chili dinner in Moore Hall, benefiting the Sumerians of the diocese. Deacon Fenlon's Advent series on the classic work, The Imitation of Christ, continues this Monday evening in Moore Hall. And next weekend is the second collection for the annual Religious Retirement Fund. Eucharistic Adoration continues in the church through the end of the year from noon to 9 p.m. on Sundays. For details for any of these, check our bulletin, our website, our weekly email blast, or scan the QR code in the pews. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads for the blessing. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent and enrich you with his blessing. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity, so that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.